I recently did a talk about electronic access control in Texas at uh, DC 214. It's a local group that uh, gathers and talks about security issues, and uh, it's spawned from the annual DEF CON security conference that meets. And one of the things I talked about was the vulnerabilities in some of the access control. I had a demonstration of the emergency services drop chain box that you see right here. It uh, It is generally put on automatic slide gates and has the ability when the gate is in the closed position to um, pull this door up and pull the handle which is attached to the other side of this um, aircraft cable and what it does is it pulls this lever right here and drops this device which is called a uh, bullet and that's what I call it a drop chain bullet and I talked a little bit about the vulnerability of the little gaps in the side here. I'm using a Slim Jim to actually grab the wire and pull it. It's not an easy task to do. And the legality of whether you can carry this or not, if you're not a locksmith or an access control person, I'm sure varies uh, depending upon your local and state uh, laws. But uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration of uh, how this works and the display that I have set up. If I redo this again, I'll make it to where the demo actually pulls this uh, pen to release the bullet. Uh, but uh, I only had a, a limited amount of time and I, I uh, think it's still effective to show actually where the vulnerability is just by this little setup. So I have the box and it's typically it's mounted in a vertical position like that so you're looking at it uh, 90 degree offset it'll have a Knox padlock on the unsecure side and then um, whatever the customer chooses to have on this side will be locking this door so they can access it if need be so basically on the inside of this box is a handle and I'll we'll look at that here in a second and I just have this uh, washer on here just so it, it couldn't get pulled all the way through but uh, with this uh, little vulnerability it doesn't take much to um, to pull this just a half inch or so to drop this uh, bullet so I'll give you a quick demonstration and uh, this this was just bought at for a couple bucks at uh, swap meet and it's was probably designed it was designed to unlock uh, uh, car doors but with it if you put a little bend in it you can kind of see what we're what I'm trying to do I'm trying to get past the uh, washer the lock washer that's on the inside of this and I know the wire has to be in that in that area right there so if I slip it in on this side I can uh, I can grab the wire the only downside to that is is you could actually just be grabbing the wire and not have very much leverage so you probably want to make this device right here as sharp as it can be so it actually bites into the uh, wire because um, this is kind of smooth so it'll it'll slip on you if it can so I'm gonna attack it from this side right here and uh, and pull on it it's not an exact demonstration because obviously there's no resistance because it's not connected to the actually actual drop drop chain kit here so uh, I'll show you the little demonstration that I was talking about and uh, I'll just feed this in you know a couple inches just to, to make it more realistic and uh, one of the things that we might want to be trying to grab is this part right here where this little uh, I forgot what this device is but it's a little device that you crimp onto the wire that secures it from actually being uh, pulled in and out so one of the things you can do is try to fish that or try to grab the loop that's inside there that that looks like this and that would be better if you could um, but you can't you can't see it so you just have to fill around for it but uh, we take the Slim Jim put it in the side grab the wire and then pull on it and and if you get the right leverage you can pull on it half an inch um, if 
if you think that you're grabbing too much wire and you can't get a grip on it, either it's either it's slipping or or uh, you just don't have enough leverage on it, you can try to get it from this side because you're going to have some slack in there. You're going to have some slack in there so the emergency services people can actually pull it. You can try to get it from this side and again try to grab the, the handle or this loop or possibly that little crimp piece. But you can see it's a lot tougher to do because the handle could be anywhere in there. That's why the attack from here is probably ideal because you know exactly where the wire is going to be and you can grab it um that's one of the vulnerabilities i talked about the other vulnerability that i talked about was the back of this uh chain right here uh so this what what it looks like in a no normal scenario is this device would be mounted with an offset similar to that right there so this wire is hooked up to the end of this little um uh, drop chain it's hooked up to the end of that and um, then you pull on that and it releases this pin right here and the end of this pin is attached to the back of the gate so in the closed position you can um, a vulnerability is where this actual chain link uh, attaches to this right here the chain link that's on that's common for most gates is the uh, just like a, a, a thicker bicycle chain. So on the end of this, it has a master link that can be taken on or off with just a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. So that's a vulnerability as well too. So the ideal thing when the uh, gate is in the closed position, you want this part of the device to actually be inside the gate operator so you can't attack it. Now, if, if you have to have it outside of the gate operator, from the outside, what you can do is actually put a plate either on the gate or on the um, fence and uh, block an attack from uh, chain bolt cutters coming in this way. Now, if you're on the secure side, that doesn't help you, but sometimes you can put some angle iron to cover this part so it is blocked, so you can't attack it with either chain bolts or um or just needle nose pliers by taking the master link off it's not a common attack on this type of device but it is a vulnerability and it's something you want to make uh, your customer aware of in a high security uh, location i forgot to mention another vulnerability about this so so when you install this sometimes you will have the uh, support post that you'll weld to on the bottom sometimes on the top maybe on the side um, and uh, on the opposite side that you have your conduit, you still have this hole, okay? Uh, now you could uh, tack weld um, a, a little knockout on there. Just take one of these three quarter inch knockouts and, and tack weld it on there and that solves this vulnerability. But it's rare that you uh, see that. And what you can do is go into the side of this. Uh, so you'll have, it doesn't really matter how much slack you have in there, but typically you'll have, uh, you know, a good half, half, uh, half a foot or a foot worth of uh, aircraft wire in there and then you also have the handle. What you could do is you could take a magnet. This is one of the wire fishing tools that uh, that I use to go up into a wall and uh, pull wire down. Um, it has a magnet on both ends but this magnet's pretty powerful and you just simply go into that hole and grab it till it comes out and then you can obviously pull on it. 
So if you don't have that much slack, um, then it's not going to make that much. It, it's going to be kind of hard to do, but it's not uncommon to have a good foot of slack in there just so the emergency service people have room to actually uh, get leverage on it and pull, especially if it has not been serviced or maintained. So that uh, that's another vulnerability that you can uh, attack with just a magnet and I guess if you had a more powerful magnet or maybe a magnet with a hook on it or something along those lines it, uh, it may make it a little bit easier. Don't forget to like and subscribe.